There are smooth riding highways almost everywhere. In Nova Scotia, there are about 3,500 miles of them. They carry you effortlessly through towns, cities, and industrial areas. They lead you to historic sites and to popular beaches. They lead you to campsites and to motels. But why hurry on? The lure of a countryside is not always found along its asphalt throughways. Highways reach far into the heart of a countryside. Like a kaleidoscope, they offer a variety of color-filled choices and delights for the unhurried traveler to enjoy again and again. So let's travel the byways for a little while and see what's backstage in Nova Scotia. Rivers are natural thoroughfares, sometimes rushing excitedly, sometimes meandering lazily. They beckon you to come with them as they wind their way through unspoiled countryside in no apparent hurry to go anywhere. They can lead you into the heart of sanctuaries and to the secret haunts of unsuspecting trout. Wildlife, startled by intruders in their woodland habitat, watch unseen. Only footprints may reveal they have been there. Just as dinosaurs' footprints, fossils now in sandstone, tell of another era. Life on these shores millions of years ago is written in the twisted rocky formations on the beach and in the imprints of flora and fauna preserved in stone. Remarkable, too, are the pictographs carved in the rocks by the Mi'kmaq Indians. Today, they're barely legible, but they tell of favorite trails and campsites, many of them enjoyed by us today. In an old Indian burial ground on the shores of Lake Kechimakuji, a memorial to this aboriginal race reads, Respect the bones of Mi'kmaqs buried here, who knew these woods and waters long ago. Today, descendants of this race gather for a five-day spiritual mission at Chapel Island in the Bradore Lake. Imagine the color of these gatherings before the Indians adopted the dress and habits of their white brethren. For children and adults alike, the great day is the Feast of St. Anne, when they commemorate Abbe Maillard, the beloved French priest who lived among their forefathers over 200 years ago. It is said Father Maillard brought their treasured gift, the statue of St. Anne, with him from France. He worked out manuscript hieroglyphics for a prayer book to help them remember his teaching. This very stone was Father Maillard's pulpit when he gave his first sermon heard on Chapel Island in 1742. And here the Indians of today gather to listen to this olden story. Nature in Nova Scotia woodlands has changed little over the years. There must have been bird watchers then too, only not with the powerful glasses and deluxe cameras used now. To explore and enjoy nature, 
you naturally turn to the byways, where the vagabond traveler has a choice of campsites and picnic grounds to suit his particular pleasure. From spring to late fall, flowers spread their color lavishly, skirting and sometimes even spilling into ponds and lakes. But don't be misled. This is not nature's handiwork. Neither is this. These mushrooms are molded of cement. Byways lead to the most unexpected places sometimes. And this is part of a fanciful summer colony reminiscent of fairyland. These gingerbread houses were designed and built by Charles MacDonald, a man with a flair for whimsy. So people stamp a bit of themselves upon their area, making its individual picture of how people work or how they play, like catching the spirit of a country square dance. country fair too. At this one, oxen and draft horses, all groomed and prettied up for the occasion, are the entrance and competitors people come miles to see. The competing teams in the horse pull are classified according to weight. Boxes of stones, usually weighing 200 pounds, are added to the drag until the team can pull no more. Will this handsome team beat the record of 10,300 pounds hauled at this exhibition 10 years ago? In another part of the province, the junior Bengal Lancers, known far and wide for their musical ride and other feats of horsemanship, put on another kind of show. It's just off the highway, an open house to all the traveling public who have time to linger a while to enjoy the Festival of the Arts. This is an annual event held four days each year at Tatamagush, a showcase of Nova Scotia talent. Housed in the roomy schoolhouse or under canvas on the school grounds, provincial craftsmen demonstrate their various skills and display many of their handcrafts. There is also an exhibit of paintings by Nova Scotian artists to browse among. But the sea around us creates its own moods and paints its own pictures. Never satisfied with its handiwork, the sea is continually reshaping the shoreline, making many secluded beaches. Not content with the coast, the sea tangles with the land, extending an arm into the very heart of Cape Breton Island, becoming a vast body of water called the Bradour Lake. It may come as a surprise to many to find a lake so far inland with tidal waters salty enough to grow marketable oysters. You'll find barnacles and seaweeds too, and other marine life growing there just as they do along the coastal regions. The sea has given each harbor, each inlet and cove its own particular character, and byways lead to a choice of any of them. If you have time, Stop and listen to the stories many of the old timers have to tell. Ghost stories, part of the natural inheritance of Nova Scotians, lean toward phantom ships and buried treasures.
But stories of haunted houses and bodiless souls are not passed over lightly. One night, three friends were having a game of cards in their summer home down by the sea. Lobster fisherman remained alone in his shack on Toby Island while his friend went ashore for supplies. After battening down for the night, the fisherman went to sleep. Awakened by unusual sounds, he rose to investigate. Had his friend come back? No friend, this. A pool of water and seaweed was all that remained. Tales such as these go on like the byways, and the tellers of them vow they really happened, and probably some of them did. The sea has a true story to tell, a tale of gold. Through the ages, the sea carved out the ovens, great caverns and tunnels deep in the rock face. Churning ever deeper, it freed the gold imprisoned there. And 100 years ago, men came and panned and sluiced the beach sand and went away the richer. the ovens may be over, but the golden warmth of Indian summer spreads over the countryside each autumn, and like a kaleidoscope ablaze with color, the byways of Nova Scotia beckon. 